wow, I can't tell you how excited I am to be, be at this point. I am so close to being done with this shop and in this video I'm going to show you guys what I did to build this by myself. Um, I did have a little bit of help as far as like getting some family members, friends and neighbors over here to help me, you know, lay some concrete and stuff like that, but I did not hire a contractor. I did not hire anybody. Um, I built this by myself. It is a 25 foot by 34 foot shop. And I just want to show you guys kind of the step-by-step -step process that you would have to go through if you were wanting to build a shop this size. And I'm not going to go into extreme detail on every single process. However, I just want to show kind of a time-lapse overview of what it would take for you guys to build a shop like this. Now, obviously, I'm not complete yet, but it will be completed here in the next few weeks. Still got my garage doors I need to do. Need to paint on the inside, epoxy flooring, and obviously gonna do some landscaping around the outside, but it is almost there. Without any further ado, let's, let's go ahead and get started. All right, well, the first thing I had to do was tear out my old garden, and there were some garden boxes, lots of PVC piping for the sprinkler system for it and everything like that. So, as you can see, I kind of had to rip it all out and then push all those boulders over, and I had to build up a little rock wall on the backside and just get ready to level things out to be able to build this shop. I also had to take a tree or two out, which was, to, you know, upsetting, but hey, you know what? Got to do what you got to do. Um, as you can see, I rented a skid steer. That was uh, helpful to level out the area. But before I could really get started on the project, I was actually, it was necessary for me to rebuild the garden. <laughs> it was basically just me moving it to the other side of the the property that way the shop could go where it used to be so you know there's my electric tractor if you haven't seen that you should go check it out on my channel I built an electric tractor it's pretty sweet um, anyway so built a few new garden boxes threw it all together and away we went uh, and then I can get started on on the real project which is the shop so the next thing that I needed to do was just get everything leveled out and squared up so I can start digging the foundation or digging the trenches where I'm going to do my monolithic pour. And I went ahead and did a monolithic pour so I can pour it all in one day. Uh, like I said, this this project I did everything myself but the foundation. I did have a bunch of people come over and help me, just friends, family, neighbors, things like that. So I, I went ahead and squared it all up with two different tape measures, 100 foot tape measures, made sure all my corners were square and used a string to kind of see where I needed to dig, and I went ahead and started setting my forms. Now, there's lots of tutorials on how to do this. You can uh, go ahead and look some of, them, some of them up for specifics, but essentially, you just need to create a big square. I used two by four, two by tens, my uh, foundation here, and then I also had a bunch of concrete stakes that I borrowed uh, from a family member, so that was convenient. And then I went ahead and spread a bunch of rock and level it all out. I did a four inch slab, and then I did two pieces of rebar that ran throughout the bottom of uh, the, the footers of the foundation. Uh, so this, uh, this just gave, gave it the strength it needed and was for code as well. So you need to check for local building codes to be able to get everything uh, you know, within code. I did have an inspection done on every process of the build, and that was obviously required when building a a big structure like this. Um, I have the PVC pipes going up. Those are for my electrical, their electrical conduit. Um, I have one for obviously my main line and then I did another for my internet line. And here you go, this is, you can see, this was the day I poured. Like I said, I had family, friends, neighbors, and I'm just so grateful for everyone who came out and helped. Um, big shout out to them because they also brought tools with them that I did not have, like the all floats. Um, that all came from a family member and the neighbor. Uh, that was a huge, huge, huge help to have everybody out um, helping me rake mud. So it went smoothly, I'd say, you know, as good as I it can be for my first time ever doing concrete. I mean, I've never done this before. Um, however, there were people there who had done it. Uh, so that was helpful. They kind of showed me what to do and kind of how to do things. I set all my J bolts in the process. Uh, that way I didn't have to worry about drilling in the concrete afterwards. Um, and here you can see, obviously, I kept it wet and moist uh, the next, the few following days. That was 
obviously necessary to make sure it hardened correctly. And then I did end up cutting the, um, the foundation as well. So I didn't show any of that, but I do have my cuts in the foundation. Now, luckily enough, I had a neighbor who let me rent their tractor from them for a few months as I was doing this project. That made things easier, like lifting up this wall. You can see I have a, um, a toe strap hooked onto the very top of the wall, and then I just leaned it up, and then that way it wouldn't fall forward and also wouldn't fall back onto the tractor because I have the bucket there. So th this was a very efficient way for me to stand all these walls up by myself without any help. I framed them all, stood them all up, nailed them all together, just me and the tractor. So that was convenient. I also used the tractor obviously to dig some trenches and things like that. Definitely not necessary for the project, but it came in handy multiple times. Uh, don't let that shy away. You know, if you don't have access, don't, don't let that shy away from you building your own. Uh, you can use other things, rent some equipment when you need it. Uh, that, that's always an option. So after obviously all the walls were put up, here comes the sheeting. And this went up relatively well. Um, definitely got heavier as the days went on. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a lot of work to put all the sheeting up. Uh, so I put it up and then I cut out the windows later, um, which you'll, you'll be able to see um, in the coming few minutes here. The trusses were the one thing that I did hire somebody to build for me. I didn't want to worry about the snow load or the, the correct pitch. It just, that was one thing that I didn't want to have to stress about. So I guess out of this whole project, the, the trusses were the one thing that I did have somebody build for me. However, I installed them all with the help of a family member. Um, definitely could have used another hand, you know, two to three people probably is, is fine. Four would have been perfect, you know, but uh, me, me and one other person got it done. And after that, it was on to uh, doing the roof and putting the sheeting up on the roof. Lots of staples, <laughs> lots of staples and lots up and down on the ladder. I know I didn't do things as efficiently as possible, but you know, it's my first time doing something like this. And so I did it the best I could and just with the resources I had. And I think it turned out really, really nice. So you just put the sheeting up everywhere and staple it all up, make sure you don't fall off the roof. That's probably the key. And honestly, doing it myself, lifting that, uh, the sheeting up, I wanted to just show a quick, a quick video of how I was able to do that. And I used the ladder as kind of a, a ramp to just slide the sheeting up into place. For me, that was what I found to be the most effective way. I'm sure there's better ways to do it, but I used kind of the ladder. I'd like set it on one of the, the steps of the ladder and let it sit on it as I climbed up further and then just continued to push until finally I could get it to fall onto the roof. At this point in time, I was feeling really good about things. Uh, you got the whole structure up, all the sheeting is on, your roof is on, and it looks like a shop now. Concrete's done. Most of the really hard work um, as far as standing up the structure has been completed. But obviously it's time for weatherproofing and shingling. Um, the first thing I did was obviously I, I put up the drip edges and along the both the sides and the fronts and, and go ahead and YouTube and, and look through some different videos of things that you can do to make sure this process goes smoothly. I watched probably a dozen different videos on roofing, but essentially you lay down your paper, your tar paper, and then you nail that all on. After that, you go ahead and you start nail gunning away at all those shingles. The process is tedious, takes a long time, knees hurt, but it's doable by absolutely anybody. I borrowed a roofing gun from a neighbor. You could use a hammer nail. I would highly suggest using a roofing nailer, but it is possible. So here's, I'm just gonna show a few clips of my roofing process.
After having already fully installed the roof, I started thinking about the ventilation, which should be done at the very beginning of the project. My original thought was I was going to do some gable vents, but those are a little bit old school. I didn't want big vents in the front of my gables. And anyways, I decided to rip off the ridge and do a ridge vent. These are highly effective and used in modern construction. I would suggest using a ridge vent. Anyways, it worked out really well. All I did was rip off the, the very ridge of my shop and then cut a hole through the middle or just like, you know, a, a single track through the middle is about two inches wide. There's instructions when you buy one of these ridge vents. All right, now we move on to the stuccoing. And before I do that, I needed to install the windows. Uh, this was done by adding some of this sealant paper around it. This you can get at any home home improvement store. You add that as more as a water barrier, and then you caulk all the way around the windows and make sure you get it extremely waterproof. This is one of those areas that you know you can have water come in if you do not do this properly. So that was not too bad. I've never installed windows before. I've never done any of this before, but I think it worked all right. So far, so good. No water leakage. Um, after that, you know, here we go with the lathing. This was hard. Uh, the lathing was, was quite difficult, especially by myself. Um, I don't think I did it quite as good of a job as I should have as far as the overlap. Um, there should be like four to six inches of overlap on the lathing. I only did a few, uh, maybe a couple inches. I stapled it down really well before I started stuccoing, so I it should be just fine. But just one of those things, you know, as a novice, you, you kind of pick up as you've as you're done with the project. So again, get some advice from others, um, get some help if you need it. But this is my first time doing stucco work, and it was difficult. I mean, this is a hard job, and it was very convenient. I had some scaffolding. I did hire a guy. This is, you know, the only kind of thing I somewhat hired another individual to do as well was he hired, I hired him for like a couple hours to just help me get started. Um, and then I did the rest of it myself. So that was, that was not, I mean, I didn't, it wasn't necessary. I could have done it myself, but it was nice to have somebody there to help me to get started. And I'm just going to show you guys a few clips here of, of me stuccoing. It, it was definitely, Definitely a project, man. And now we move on to the trench because I couldn't do my second coat of the stucco until, you know, three weeks later. It had to harden and set up. So while I was waiting, I went ahead and dug the trench for my electrical. And if I'm remembering correctly, this was a one off cable aluminum, it is thick. I'm running a 100 amp service down to my shop and I'll be having a sub panel down there. So I ran a pretty thick cable and this is one and a half inch conduit and I would have went bigger and I should have. It fit, however, it was tight. And because I did it one piece of conduit at a time, it was definitely doable. Around the 90s was pretty tight. I should have done two inch, but it was just expensive. At the time I was doing this, this conduit was super, super expensive. And because it fit in the inch and a half, I went ahead with that. And then I also ran network cable, as you see here. This is so I can have a separate Wi-Fi access point inside the shop and have wire in points. That was kind of an, one of those things that I really wanted to have, was my own kind of network down at the shop. So dug the trench, put the wire in, buried it all up. And then I moved on to the next part of the project, which was getting that final coat of stucco on, which gives you the texture. And I had a spray gun. I just sprayed on the texture of it. This was not too bad. It was probably definitely an easier part of the stuccoing. Um, I used a Synergy product. Then the only issue was is they couldn't, I couldn't get the right color. Um, I was trying to match the color of my house. And so I went ahead and did white. And then after I was done stuccoing it all or done, you know, letting it dry, I went ahead and painted over it just with an airless paint gun. And the painting of it went, went pretty smoothly. I don't know. I kind of liked the white, but I had to match it to my house. So that, that's what it looks like when it was all done. And man, this was a breath of fresh air. Stucco, wa wa weatherproofed, ceiling. And I'm ready to move on to the interior. 
I really wanted a big storage closet, tool closet, so that's what you see here. Just keep clutter away from the shop and just keep everything in one central location. So that was nice. Um, then the rest of it, I started to do the rough electrical. Um, that way I have some extra electrical outlets while I continue to work and just to get all that ready for my electrical inspection. I ran all the electrical myself. I put some of the outlets in the ceiling, obviously for the garage door and just to have extension cords from the ceiling. This was all done within a few days. Roughing in electrical is not hard, um, but this was my first time ever installing a sub panel. And like I said, it's a 100 amp sub panel. I did have um, a 250 volt outlet as well. So a couple things that were a little bit more tricky than what is normal, but it was not too bad. I just YouTubed it and learned how to put in breakers and stuff like that. If you're not comfortable with that kind of stuff, just hire an electrician. I also have here my um, camera system and the access point. All of my networking is going to that one central box. So it's going to be there with the switch. It's, it's kind of convenient to have all your networking in one place. So that's what I did for my networking. I'm going to have PoE cameras on the different eaves of the shop and interior as well. So um, yeah, that's where they all ran. This next part I'm really excited about, and this is PEX tubing for my compressed air. I just use standard PEX tubing uh, with shark bite connectors, and I have some drops that I'll be putting um, air compressor connectors on. The air compressor will be back inside the closet to keep it quiet while I'm working in the shop. Anyway, there's lots of tutorials on how to use PEX tubing for compressors, but anyway, that's what that is for. Next, I just got to do the insulation, and this uh, this wasn't hard. It was just kind of tedious. Just I used, uh, I think it was R19 or maybe it was R13 bats. I uh, had a Got, got them in like 32 foot rolls and just cut them to the, the length I needed and installed all the insulation and then I will be doing spray in insulation on the roof or inside the ceiling and attic so essentially I just had to do this and it was pretty simple then just stapled it I did staple it on top of the the studs um, there's obviously you can do it on the inside or on the top of and I decided to do it on top so now it's time for sheetrocking. I did the sheetrocking. I did the entire ceiling myself using this lift. It wasn't too bad, um, but I did use 5 8th, 5 8 sheetrock for my ceiling just to give it some more rigidity, strength, and prevent it from sagging or any kind of issues. So it was thick, it was heavy, and getting it on the lift, as you can see by myself, was quite the task. It went slow but I got it to work and all I did was shuffle it up on there and then slowly crank it up.
All right, excuse the echo, but just wanted to get in here and show you guys I've started to mud. And this video is getting a little long, so I think I'm gonna end it here because the structure is complete and I'm gonna come out with another video with the interior all done. I mean, I still need to obviously finish mudding, baseboards. I'm gonna build a nice big workbench right here. Um, I'm gonna put in the air compressor lines and the fittings, all the electrical still needs to be you know, done as far as all the outlets. I'm gonna do a bunch of shelving in the inside of my closet and then the lighting and all that stuff. So I'll come out with a video um, showing you guys all of that once I have that all done. The other thing I wanna mention before I end this video is the tools that I used for this. I'm gonna leave a link in the description, but essentially I used a set of Makita tools. Really all I used was my drill, my two drills, my impact drill, my regular drill, a circle saw, which I have in this bag, circle saw, and then a sawzaw. With those tools, you can pretty much build this whole shop. I mean, honestly, it's you don't need too many specialty tools. The only other things you'll need is you'll need some kind of a, a framing nailer and a staple gun for framing and stapling on the, the, the OSB board. And then beyond that, you know, for the stuccoing you're gonna need, depending on how you're doing the texturing, you're gonna need something for the stuccoing. You know, an air compressor obviously, but that's pretty much all you guys really need as far as specialty tools, and you can get this job done. Having some scaffolding makes things easier, but you can always just use a ladder with, or two ladders with a, you know, a, a plank of some kind. And yeah, so anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I'll show you guys another video here in the coming months when it's all finished. But hopefully you got something out of this and really hopefully you guys can just take this and be able to have a little confidence knowing that somebody like myself with zero construction skills, never being a contractor, never working in construction, can build their shop just like I did. And I'll give you guys one last kind of look of where I'm at in the process, but still need to do some landscaping out here. I still need to do the soffits, installed some lights, need to paint the door. Uh, besides that, I mean, the exterior is done. And in a few months, hopefully you guys will be able to see, see this thing completed. So thanks for watching.